Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church in Brooklyn, New York. And it's time for today's daily devotion. This is where we take a chapter from the Bible and read it together each weekday. We are going through the Gospel of Luke at this time. Uh, there's a series of videos on Matthew. You can go back and uh, have a look at if you've missed those. It's a series of videos on the Gospel of Mark. And uh, you can go back and have a look at those too. If you've missed those, we're going through Luke now. And uh, over time, there will be a playlist over other biblical books for you to access and include a little bit of God's Word in your, in your day. Today we are reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. Uh, excuse me. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. Uh, in our last chapter, we saw the calling of Matthew. And I saw that in the subtitles uh, just now. That's where I misspoke. So today, Luke, chapter 6, is... Um, 49 verses. It's about par, kind of the longer side of normal. Jesus is going to discuss the Sabbath. He's going to heal on the Sabbath. That's going to create a bit of controversy. He's going to choose his 12 apostles from his growing number of disciples. He's, remember, we, we often talk about Jesus' 12 disciples. And we know what we mean, but the 12, uh, that inner group, uh, are really apostles, the sent out ones. And that distinguishes them from the larger group of disciples. Because the disciples are anybody who's following Jesus. And Jesus had many more followers than just the 12. Um, as a matter of fact, in this chapter, we'll see that crowds are following Jesus. And then Jesus... Um, gives us the Beatitudes. And that word Beatitude means supreme blessing or the greatest blessing. It's going to teach us about loving our enemies, not judging others, the tree and its fruit. This is all from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is um, just a really rich teaching. And if we just studied that regularly for the rest of our lives, we would do well, I think. Let's read Luke chapter 6. It begins in verse 1. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, His disciples broke off heads of grain, rubbed, the, rubbed off the husks in their hands, and ate the grain. But some Pharisees said, Why are you breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? And Jesus replied, Haven't you read in the Scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests can eat. He also gave some, of, uh, gave some to his companions. And Jesus added, The Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. On another Sabbath day, a man with a deformed right hand was in the synagogue while Jesus was teaching. And the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees watched Jesus closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew their thoughts. He said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand in front of everyone. So the man came forward, and then Jesus said to his critics, I have a question for you. Does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath, or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them one by one and then said to the man, Hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand, and it was restored. And at this, the enemies of Jesus were wild with rage and began to discuss what to do with him. One day soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be apostles. Here are their names. Simon, whom he named Peter. Andrew, Peter's brother. 
James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, another Simon, who is called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and then another Judas, Iscariot, uh, who later betrayed him. When they came down from the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area, surrounded by his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from as far north as the sea coasts of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and be healed of their diseases, and those troubled by evil spirits were healed. Everyone tried to touch him because healing power went out from him, and he healed everyone. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God blesses you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. What blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? When that happens, be happy, yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets that same way. What sorrow awaits you who are rich, for you have your only happiness now. What sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now, for a time of awful hunger awaits you. What sorrow awaits you who laugh now, for your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow. What sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowds, for their ancestors also praised false prophets. But you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Give to anyone who asks, and when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do to others as you would like them to do to you. If you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them, and if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, why should you get credit? Even sinners will lend to other sinners for a full return. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you'll truly be acting as children of the Most High. For He is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. You must be compassionate just as your Father is compassionate. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others, or it will all come back against you. Forgive others, and you'll be forgiven. Give, and you'll receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Then Jesus gave the following illustration. Can one blind person lead another? Won't they both fall into a ditch? Students are not greater than their teacher, but the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye, and then you'll see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I'll show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it's well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it'll collapse into a heap of ruin. 
That concludes Luke chapter 6. Um, a, a really, a really great chapter in the Gospel of Luke. And I, I just really love Jesus' Sermon on the Mount because it's just so practical and so challenging. Um, Jesus teaches us that, hey, you're important, but you're not that important. And the most important thing you can do is not to serve yourself, but to sacrificially and selflessly serve others. Love those who will never love you back. Give to those who can never pay you back. That's counterintuitive. We call it upside down. It offends the mind. It goes against everything that's in our nature. But that's how it is in the kingdom of God. Jesus teaches that the last will be first and the first will be last. Um, I'm also just always struck by the religious spirit of uh, these Pharisees and teachers of the law who have legalized a Sabbath to the point where, you know, Jesus teaches that the Sabbath is for man, not the other way around. And it's for our good. It's not, we, we don't serve the, the Sabbath. We need to honor the Sabbath. But if someone's being harmed by our behavior or our actions or our traditions, that's not honoring the Sabbath. That's just empty, pointless, harmful legalism. Where he's saying, no, uh, you, should, you should starve on the Sabbath rather than ho hold a piece of grain in your hand. Jesus heals a man. He brings life. He brings restoration to a man's hand. And these religious leaders are looking at Jesus. They're watching Jesus. And you know what strikes me in this? They know in advance the anointing that He has. And they know that He has the power to heal. That's not in question. They're just waiting to see if He'll dare heal someone on the Sabbath. Isn't that remarkable? This is the number one greatest affliction in this. Imagine not having the use of your hand. Imagine how debilitating that is. And imagine having that restored miraculously by the power of God. That would change your life. And that will bring a testimony that will influence generations and these religious leaders are angry about it to the point of beginning to plot Jesus' execution because it dared happen on the Sabbath. If that's not putting the cart before the horse, I don't know what is. Hope you've enjoyed uh, our time together in Luke chapter 6. I uh, hope you'll join us again next time for Luke chapter 7. God bless.